took her on Twitter. Yes! Yes! Well, what seems to be an official capacity regarding his new show, Tucker Carlson goes after Ukraine. Fuck. Media. <laughs> and slaps down the bullshit narratives. Nikki! <laughs> Episode 1. I'm Jazz Berganzo, and this he ain't lying. is what's next. <laughs> What's up, guys? Jazz Berganzo, what's next? Your daily, of course. Happy Wednesday to you guys. Well, he's back again. Yes, one Tucker Carlson, formerly of Fox News, the legend, the savage himself, of course, since being fired from Fox, he's appeared on Twitter three times. And of course, this third time, what looks to be official capacity regarding his new show on Twitter, episode one, he goes after Ukraine and the Russia bullshit narrative as he as he calls it let's take a look this comes out of the blaze tucker carlson released his first video of new show on twitter and rips into media narratives about the ukraine war former fox news host tucker carlson released his first episode of a new show on twitter on tuesday and used most of his time to attack the narratives of those who support ukrainian war against a russian invasion carlson parted ways with fox news soon after the cable network settled a lawsuit with dominion for roughly 800 million dollars of course it was all bullshit but it ended up um, with Carlson being fired. Of course, since then, ratings have tanked and, yeah, have yet to recover. Yeah, I don't see that anytime soon. He has since accused Fox News of breach of contract and fraud in relation to circumstances of his departure. Carlson used his first Twitter show to attack Ukrainian President Captain Sweatpants Zelensky and the Republicans who have supported the U.S. sending money, and I mean $150 billion and counting, of your money and my money for this bullshit and military supplies to the nation. He connected immediate support for the war with a report from the U.S. that had covered up an incident which extraterrestrial UFO was allegedly recovered. Yeah, if anybody who's watched his show on Fox prior, yeah, he dug that. At the end of the 10-minute video, Carlson compared Americans uh, to the Russians who were living in ignorance and propagandized under former Soviet Union. Quote, we're the ones who are living in ignorance now. The U.S. government has managed to classify more than a billion so-called public documents. At this point, we, can possibly know our, uh, we can't possibly know what our leaders are doing. We're not allowed to know, said Carlson. By definition, that's not a democracy. Well, it's not, but we're a republic. Yeah, it's fine with the media. Secrecy is a powerful tool to control. Stop asking how we got so rich. Here's another story about racism. Go eat each other. That's the program. And how most of us here in the U.S. manipulated by lies, silenced by taboos. And here's a little bit. Hey, it's Tucker Carlson. This morning, it looks like somebody blew up the Kokovka Dam in southern Ukraine. The rushing wall of water wiped out entire villages, destroyed a critical hydropower plant, and as of tonight, puts the largest nuclear reactor in Europe in danger of melting down. So if this was intentional, it was not a military tactic. It was an act of terrorism. The question is, who did it? Well, let's see. The Kokovka Dam was effectively Russian. It was built by the Russian government. It currently sits in Russian-controlled territory. The dam's reservoir supplies water to Crimea, which has been, for the last 240 years, home of the Russian Black Sea Fleet. Blowing up the dam may be bad for Ukraine, but it hurts Russia more. And for precisely that reason, the Ukrainian government has considered destroying it. In December, the Washington Post quoted a Ukrainian general saying his men had fired American-made rockets at the dam's floodgate. As a Jeez. Test strike. How so did really, they get American the weapons? It becomes much hmm. less of a mystery what might have happened to the dam. Any fair person would conclude that the Ukrainians probably blew it up, just as you would assume they blew up Nord Stream, the Russian natural gas pipe. Yeah, remember that? Fall. Remember fact, that? Yes, out of sight, out of mind. As we Memory hold. Know. It's not like Vladimir Putin is anxious to wage war on himself. Oh, but that's where you're wrong, Mr. and Mrs. Cable News Consumer. Vladimir Putin is exactly Slight. that sort of man, the sort of man who'd shoot himself to death in order to annoy you. We know this from the American media, which wasted no time this morning in accusing the Russians of sabotaging their own infrastructure. Bill Kristol, the man who once told us that Saddam Hussein was responsible for 9-11, immediately denounced Putin as a war criminal. I remember that. Talk about a fucking clown. To Donald Trump. The rest of the pundit class made similar, clearly coordinated noises. Putin did it! Putin did it! And their reasoning was simple. 
Putin is evil, and evil people do evil things purely for the dark joy of being evil. True. In this specific case, Putin attacked himself, which is the most evil thing you can do, and therefore perfectly in character for a man that evil. That was your explanation. Interesting. No one who's paid to cover these things seemed to entertain even the possibility it could have been the Ukrainians who did it. No chance of that. Ukraine, as you may have heard, is led by a man called Zelensky. Captain Sweatpants, we can say everyone. A dead certain fact that he was not involved. He couldn't have been. Zelensky is too decent for terrorism. Now, you see him on television, and it's true you might form a different impression. Sweaty and rat like, a comedian turned oligarch, a persecutor of Christians, a friend of BlackRock. But don't believe your own eyes. Actually, Mr. Zelensky is a very good man. The best, really. As George W. Oh. Bush once noted, he is our generation's Winston Churchill. <laughs> of all the people in the world, Clowns. our shifty, dead-eyed Ukrainian friend in the tracksuit is uniquely incapable of blowing up a dam. He's literally a living saint, a man in whom there is no sin. Hmm. That's why Lindsey Graham is so attracted to him. They're just two good people. Wow. Hanging out together and being good. Lindsey Graham likes and like to all good people, play from the rear. Person, they spend a lot of time talking about killing people. And laughing, like friends do. Here's the pair last week. Free or die. Free or die. Now you are free. Yes. And we will be. And the Russians are dying. It's the best money we've ever spent. Fucking clown, Thank man. So Lindsey Graham is such a fucking clown. The Russians are dying. It's the best money we've ever spent, Graham says. Yeah, yeah you got that right. A smile spreads across his thin, quivering lips as he forms the words. He looks like a starving man contemplating a breakfast buffet. The aroma of death has aroused Lindsey Graham. Thanks so much, replies Zelensky. He feels the same way. See, there's something dark here. Just two middle-aged guys celebrating the killing of a population. They don't seem like the kind of people who'd enjoy flooding villages or starting a famine. And in any case, who cares if they are? It's really not your business. Your job is to support Ukraine. Period. Watch Nikki Haley, a Republican exactly. candidate for president, explain this principle on CNN. A win, a win for Ukraine is a win for all of us. And for them to sit and for there those and say, who don't know, Nikki Haley is running for dispute, president, so. That's just not the case. To say that we should stay neutral. It is in the best interest of America. It's in the. That goes on for roughly about another six minutes. It's a 10 minute plus video of his first one. So I watched the whole thing last night. Um, yeah, he slaps him down. Only as Tucker can. But you get the gist. Um, it seems that Tucker is still in Tucker mode. I mean, he's not going, he's not uh, doing anything flamboyant or what have you, because that's not who Tucker is. But if this is just a snippet of what his future episodes are going to be, they're going to be pretty good. And uh, I look forward to it. But at the same time, he makes a lot of points is that one, we've wasted billions on this uh, proxy war with Ukraine and Russia. And of course, I've seen a number of videos on Twitter in regards to how Ukraine is now during the war and how we think them to be or or what's going on in our own cities when we are dealing with real wars going on from a social and spiritual standpoint but then again that's just me and with that being said i'm josh Bergonzo. this is what's next want to see more like this please leave a comment below like it share it subscribe to it hit the notification bell so you guys never miss a thing and we'll see you next time peace